Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt with Illinois WorkNet. Thanks for joining us today for our uh, CYEP technical assistance webinar. We just went over a whole mess of stuff on Friday the 17th, so I don't have a whole lot to talk about today. Hopefully everybody has been able to work on their numbers uh, from the webinar that we had on the 7th. If you still have issues, you probably will want to uh, give me an email, send me an email so that we can go over things. I know I was working on one agency, some of the, the people in the list uh, to make sure that they only showed up on one profile and I've got about half of that one done. I think that was um, Austin People's Action Center. So I've been working with that uh, and I don't see anybody on the call right now from there. Otherwise, uh, let me know if you've got any issues going on. Uh, if you happen to be in the call and I don't have your agency marked, please let me know that as well. Uh, one of the things that we talked about on Friday that uh, we need to, I just want to reiterate some of these things. Um, Gary uh, mentioned that uh, if you're talking to a, a student and it's July and they're going to be going back to school in the fall, they're considered in school. And we want to make sure that we're uploading pay stubs. If you use a payroll service, the report that you get from the service can be uploaded. You, uh, she would like them uploaded at least quarterly. And to document for subsidized, she wants pay stubs and timesheets. And if you are uh, oh, it's on. uploading with the, give us the number for the webinar, so I got to find out for the webinar number. I got the automatic page. Um, and if you are are using the work number or a different agency for uh, for the following up afterwards to see if they're still working. She's not as concerned about that. Uh, you do want to okay. use case notes to make sure that, that um, you're tracking everybody. Uh, the next meeting will be on April 24th. And Brandon, I just muted everybody. So let me unmute you. Is it still going to be at um, the Matson. place in Matson? Yes, that Prairie State College in Matson on that Friday, April 24th, yes. Okay. And then um, there are a number of other things that we're going to follow up. One of the other pieces that um, was brought up during the meeting on Friday was uh, if you want to use something other than the NACTI, you need to send a message to at least Brandon and me, if not include Nicole and Kristen, to uh, explain why you want to use that other assessment tool and what the pros and cons of it are and what it tests. Because our goal is to test at least the soft skills and reading and writing. So one of the things that I want to show you, if we get approved, uh, if we get approved another assessment tool on a customer's profile, you have the ability to add the information from that profile. Um, Brandon, Eric is asking you if you got the email from him about an alternative assessment that he submitted a couple of months back. Yes, I was getting ready to respond to him. Yes, I did get the email um, that he sent on Friday and I have that one and I believe three others. So that we're looking over and I'm going to get back to those providers about those questions. I have everything I need on a few of them and then on a few other requests, I need more information. So. I'll be, but I'll be getting back with everybody. I just didn't have time on Friday, of course. <laughs> All right. One of the pieces that we need to know, um, one of the reasons why I need to know what the assessment is that you're asking about is to see if we can actually upload the information to the customer's profile. 
Now, we do have the ability to add a lot of items in here. And one of the things that you can do if the assessment is not already listed like NACTI or Employment 101, we do have the ability to add assessment results here and you can pick the type. Is it basic skills or other assessment? <clears throat> if it's a basic skills, we can pick the assessment category. What is it testing? Uh, what's the functional area? Uh, what the assessment name is. So if I'm doing a, a functional area of math, it's uh, TAID, CASA, GAIN, TABE 1112. If I'm doing a, an other assessment, I can pick the category of skills, perhaps. The assessment name, we've got Prove It, Casey Life Skills, Work Keys, Inspiration. So we already have a number of the assessments out there linked with our system. <coughs> but right now, at this moment, NACTI is the only appropriate one. If you send your information off to Brandon, then he will approve it on a case-by-case -case basis. Is there anything else you want to say about the assessments, Brandon? Uh, no, that covers it. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, okay. The, there was a question about applications and filling in the information. So if it's staying with the same agency, the application, uh, I'm sorry, the information will filter into the customer's profile if they already have an Illinois WorkNet profile, whether it's a new agency or the existing agency. But you do need to have them complete the application <coughs> to get them, if you have closed them out previously. So I hope that answers whoever had that question um, earlier. Uh, on Friday, I'm sorry, on Friday. Um, and as far as the WorkNet ID, if the, if the youth is reapplying to your agency, they will keep the same WorkNet ID. If they are applying to a new agency, they get a new customer ID. <clears throat> Do they need to retake assessments, Employment 101, NACTI? Um, that is going to be a DHS question. So Brandon, it will filter those in. It will pull them into their profile from Illinois WorkNet. They can take their post-assessment on Employment 101 again if they did not score well enough. and. We are remodeling Employment 101. That's one of my tasks for this uh, winter months. Um, so they may want to retake the Employment 101 because we are going to make it more now, more current, more interactive. So Brandon, do you want to? Yes, as far as the NACTI or once we have other approved assessments, they don't have to take those more than once. That's optional. I don't know that we have very many youth that do even after they the, complete them, try them again. But no, they don't have to do it more than once. The challenge will be is meeting that performance measure. That That's, that's the only challenge that I can see because if they don't take it with them, it's a possibility. Um, but that's gonna have to be something that we'll have to work out on the administrative level. So like on these performance measure deliverables, uh, we'll have yes. to see what ha we'll have to see what happens with that. Okay. So in our next group discussion, if you can remember to bring that up. Okay. All right. Um, that is actually pretty much all I have to talk about because we covered a lot of uh, things in the meeting on Friday. So unless you've got specific questions that I can try to answer or that Brandon can try to answer, 
<clears throat> I'll wait just a moment here to see if anybody types anything. I can open up the microphone if you've got a question that you need to physically ask. And then I also need to know if anybody else has shown up on the call that I don't have marked already. So Evelyn Antwi Mensa, what agency are you with? If it, if it isn't already marked, let me know. How to get to which screen? CYEP. The dashboard screen? D, can you hear me? I'm with AACF. Okay. Thank you. ACF. AACF. Okay. We've got you. AACF. Yeah, we've got Thank you. you. Mark. Okay. Um, all right, there's a couple of ways that you can get to this screen. If you are, let me pull the live one over. If you are in Illinois WorkNet, and if you log into your Illinois WorkNet account, So you have to have a username and you have to be logged in. You have to be approved and added to the system to use that. Uh, Brandon, did you guys send out the PPR Friday afternoon? I thought you did. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Mary, I did. I wonder if Mary didn't get a copy of it. Um, oh. I can check to make sure All right. that she's on my list, but I think that she should be. Okay. Um, okay, so back to the how to get to the dashboard. You can get to your dashboard through your Illinois WorkNet personal dashboard by clicking the drop down arrow and going to customer support center. That will get you to the dashboard for, for CYEP. Otherwise, you can go to CYEP Partners. And I think I have to spell that right. And from the guide page, you can go to the Customer Support Center by clicking this link right here. So if you're going to bookmark anything, bookmark this page right here. Uh, because it will get you where you need to go, plus the resources that you need to watch. Does that answer it for you, CYEP? And what agency are you with? And um, Mr. Ship, send me an email with the youth so that I can check uh, to see if they uh, if a student signs up for an account on Illinois WorkNet and completes the CYEP application, they will not get an email confirmation like you do if you're just signing up for Illinois WorkNet on your own. They are assuming that what they enter is correct. So we'll just have to look to see. And I would check right now, but I am recording and I don't want to have that personal information out there. Okay, any other questions? All right, did I get everybody who's on the call? Did I get all of the agencies that are on the call? So is anybody on the call from Albany Park Community Center, Austin People's Action Center, any of these ones in the middle here? Uh, sorry, homework hangout is there. Any of these agencies right here? Any of these agencies right here? And 
and SGA. All right, Universal Family and Westside Health Authority. All right, I'm good. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email or give me a call on the home office number. I'll be here the rest of the afternoon. Um, I can move them. Tammy, send me their name. I can move them to your agency. All righty. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you. Yes? Yes, I have a question. We have um, um, selective services that need to be changed to a yes instead of a no. Is that still to email you, or can we do it ourselves? Uh, let's look and see. On the application, if they've been um, made eligible, we have to change it in the database. If you have not made them eligible yet, then um, then you can go eligible. in here and edit the section. Okay. Uh, they have all been made eligible already. Then we have to do it in the database, or I believe that the customer can log in as themselves and go to their profile. And I think they might be able to change it, but I have to double check on that. Okay. So let me write Thank myself you. a note about that. And can I, I have one more question? All right. um, yes, uh, under employment, we are putting all our employments on that work site. I believe if it's a regular employer, it can just be entered under the career plan and that should be suffice or we still have to enter them as a work site and then link them to the um, career plan. On the way that we're doing things now is on, I have to move this so that I can get to that box. You add the employer only, just the employer, through worksite placement. You add an employer worksite. And then on the customer, you go to their career plan and add the step for the employment. Otherwise, it doesn't count right. OK. That is, if there's just a regular employer that you know they're not actually uh, doing a work site, that they're actually placed at, with an employer. It's a permanent employment that's not being yes. subsidized? Correct. Uh, you still want to enter it under here just so that you get credit for getting them to work. OK. 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 All right, anything else? Okay. All right. I am going to conclude the recording and stop sharing. I will see you guys all or talk to you all on February 4th. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Dee. You too. Thank you. Bye.